Hello and welcome to One Minute Theatre Reviews. I'm Paul Seven Lewis, and in this episode I'll be reviewing a preview of The Normal Heart by Larry Kramer in a production at the National Theatre. The Normal Heart, uh, written in 1985 as the AIDS epidemic was finally beginning to be acknowledged, is based on author Larry Kramer's own experience of this period, and the lead character, Ned, is semi-autobiographical. And it's great to see Ben Daniels given a starring role. He's an excellent actor, always delivers on stage or screen. Now, these days he's probably best known for playing Princess Margaret's husband in The Crown. But in this production, he shows that he can carry a whole play. It's a play about prejudice and ignorance, about fighting for what is right, and about living in a time of plague. The Normal Heart is a deeply moving play with scintillating, witty, powerful dialogue that deserves this well-acted revival. Well, that's the one-minute review, but keep watching to find out more about how well this play stands up 36 years later, whether the actors did it justice, oh, and where to avoid sitting if you do decide to see it. This production of The Normal Heart was stopped in its tracks by the COVID-19 pandemic, so inevitably, now that it's finally made it onto the Olivier stage of the National Theatre, we view it in the light of our experience of what's happened over the last year and a half or more. We recognise the authorities' slowness to respond to what was going on, uh, albeit nothing like the fatal head-in-the-sand attitude to the early deaths within New York's gay community. Um, and in the unwillingness to, to do what's necessary to save lives, we can see a parallel with some gay men back then refusing to modify their sex lives. We're also familiar with wide-ranging and sometimes wild theories about the causes and cures uh, that have since gone by the wayside. In the play, you get the sense of bewilderment and panic about where this so-called gay plague has come from and how it's being spread. What's also happened between the postponement of this production and now is the joyous but devastating TV series It's a Sin by Russell T Davis. Now that was set in the UK rather than New York and it took us into the 90s but anyone who saw it will recognise the way some newly liberated gay men became highly promiscuous during the 70s and 80s and again the slowness to react and the crushing sadness of friends dying all around and indeed the reconciliation between some parents, especially mothers, and their dying sons. Now, the normal heart is much more overtly political than it's a sin, and in this respect, it perhaps resembles The Plague by Albert Camus, in which uh, an outbreak of bubonic plague follows a similar trajectory, uh, and there is intended to echo the rise of Nazism. The Normal Heart follows closely uh, the developments from the early deaths, uh, the uncertainties, one particular concerned doctor, onto the need to form an organisation that would fight to warn gay men of the danger and help those that contracted AIDS, and in fact to pursue the authorities for support. It's hard to know what's more depressing. People faced with the possibility of contracting a fatal disease still carrying on with a reckless lifestyle or the local and national government, health authorities and the media trying to pretend it wasn't happening because this seemed to be only to do with gay men or, or because it would be bad for tourism or because they regarded homosexuality itself as a sickness and certainly not something they wanted to be associated with. So, both familiar and yet still shocking. Now, Ned is instantly at odds with his fellow campaigners. He's all for directness and shouting from the rooftops to pressurise those in power into action and his fellow gay men to refrain from sex. I guess he's the kind of person who these days will be gluing himself to the motorway. Others, some still in the closet, argue for a more softly, softly approach. Because the abrasive Ned is never afraid to tell it like it is, he does have some barnstorming moments. But the other actors in Ned's circle, including Luke Norris, Dina Fetcher, Daniel Monks and Danny Lee Winter, take hold of their well-drawn, varied characters and fill this evening with humour, pain, anger and compassion. 
A special word for Liz Carr, who plays the doctor who first notices the increase in this distinctive illness and goes from compassionate but objective doctor to militant campaigner with a blistering speech in the second act. How does it always happen that all of the idiots are always on your team, she says. Ned is uh, also in conflict with his straight brother Ben, a nicely nuanced performance by Robert Bowman, showing the love he feels for his brother, uh, but barely able to disguise his homophobia. Add to this mix that the previously lonely Ned falls in love, just when lovers have become well, potentially harbingers of death. The end is heartbreaking, compounded by the misery of the latter stages of the disease and even after their death, the continuing prejudice in the treatment of their bodies. If you're not in tears by the end, I would question whether you have a heart. Prejudice and selfishness never seem to go away. We're reminded in the play how governments turned a blind eye to the Nazis' treatment of Jews. And if we look around today, maybe we could take uh, the example of the way a male-dominated, misogynistic government and judicial system consistently failed to take effective action against the number of rapes and other violence against women. A word about the set. The Olivia Theatre at the National has been converted into a theatre in the round. The stage is a circle with a thin light all, uh, all the way around the circumference, perhaps suggesting the way gay men were seen at that time as separate from the rest of society. It's pretty much bare, apart from a few benches, so this production is all about the acting. And that, to be frank, is a relief after many productions I've seen in this large space where the set designers dwarfed the play. The set also has a flame burning high up throughout and... Uh, I don't know, but I took this to represent the kind of eternal fame, flame you'd find at a Tomb of the Unknown Warrior or something like that, as if to say these thousands who died through, the, through prejudice and ignorance should not be forgotten. Now, to make this truly in the round, there are seats on what would normally be the stage, though it was my impression, sitting in the circle, that the actors faced to the traditional front uh, more often than not. Oh, and a word of warning, there are lighting towers positioned around the edge of the circular stage, and these will inevitably give you a restricted view if you sit in the right or left stalls and circle. And I know this is true because a delayed train caused me to arrive at the very last moment, so I was sitting to the side for the first act before I was able to take my central seat. I give this preview of The Normal Heart at the National Theatre four stars. And just as an aside, there's also a tremendous scene within the film of Everybody's Talking About Jamie, a scene which is not in the stage musical, uh, that covers this same period and reminds us of the bravery of campaigners at that time and the just sheer awfulness of AIDS. And no matter what you might think of her in other respects, the way Princess Diana led the way in talking to and hugging people dying from AIDS at a time when some wouldn't touch them or even be in the same room as them. I hope you found this review useful and uh, if you want to be the first to see my future reviews then please subscribe to this channel. And if you'd like to read my reviews, trot along to the website oneminutetheatrereviews.co.uk Thank you for watching.